Well, hello, this is Robert, and today from the Outbreak News Desk. Now, Negleria fowleri is a microscopic single-celled living amoeba. Infection with Negleria fowleri is rare and can only happen when water contaminated with the amoeba enters the body through the nose. We'll talk more about this serious pathogen later, but let's go ahead and take a look at today's story. Two weeks ago, the Florida Department of Health or uh, in Charlotte County, or DOH Charlotte, confirmed a case of an individual infected with Negleria fowleri, possibly as a result of sinus rinsing practices utilizing tap water. Now, this is not the first time uh, Negleria amoeba have been found um, as, as being contracted via nasal irrigation. Um, using these devices, neti pots and the like, and the use of tap water. Several years ago, uh, two um, individuals died in Louisiana by using tap water in their neti pots. And every year, uh, a number of cases are reported out of Pakistan due to ablution or uh, religious ritual nasal rinsing. Uh, the individual uh, from Charlotte County um, uh, did unfortunately die from the amoeba infection, um, which is the most common occurrence, as, you, as we'll talk about later. All right, let, let's go ahead and see what the Charlotte County had to say about um, this issue and what kind of preventive measures they are recommending to the public. Well, Florida health officials advised residents soon after this, the announcement of the death uh, concerning safety and tap water. And they say the following, when making sinus rinse solutions, use only distilled or sterile water. Tap water should be boiled for at least one minute and cooled before sinus rinsing. Do not allow water to go up your nose or sniff water into your nose when bathing, showering, washing your face, or swimming in hard plastic or blow up pools. Do not jump into or put your head under the bathing water, bathtubs, small plastic or inflatable pools. Walk or lower yourself in. Keep small plastic or inflatable pools clean by emptying, scrubbing, and allowing them to dry after each use. Keep your swimming pool adequately disinfected with chlorine before and during use. And finally, do not allow children to play unsupervised with hoses or sprinklers as they may accidentally squirt water up their nose. Avoid slip and slides and other activities where it is difficult to prevent water going up the nose or consider using nasal clips for added protection. Well, let's take a little bit, more, take a little bit closer look at this disease or this infection and um, we'll take a look at the number of cases. And let me, there we go, that's a little bit better. All right, according to, according to the CDC, um, of the 157 people known to be infected with Negleria fowleri in the United States from 1962 to 2022, only four have survived. And as you can see in the map, the darker colors are the states that have reported the most cases. In the state of Florida, let's see if 37 cases uh, have been reported during this period of time. That's about 24% of the total. And if you actually add up Florida and Texas, they account for about half of all Negleria cases in the United States during that time period. All right, let's um, take a look at um, the, some more information about the parasite itself. 
All right. Now, the technical disease infection is called primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, uh, also known as PAM, P-A-M. And it's a disease of the central nervous system. Uh, signs and symptoms of Neglaria falari infection are similar to bacterial meningitis, which is something of a problem because this lowers the chances of diagnosing PAM at first. So if you go into the emergency room with a bad headache and they suspect meningitis, and you know you've been out in fresh water, swimming in fresh water, and you may have got it up your nose, you may want to mention that to the medical staff. People become infected when water containing Neglaria falari enters the nose. The amoeba migrates to the brain along the olfactory nerve of the nose, typically while swimming um, or other recreational activities in fresh water. So fresh water is key and keeping the uh, water out of your nose is also key. Um, people do not become infected from drinking contaminated water. Uh, symptoms of PAM start about 1 to 12 days uh, with an average of about 5 days after swimming or having another nasal exposure to water containing the amoeba. People die about 1 to 18 days, again, about five, uh, 5 days median after symptoms begin. PAM is difficult to detect because the disease progresses rapidly. So the diagnosis sometimes occurs after the patient dies. No data exists to accurately estimate the true risk of PAM. Uh, hundreds of millions of visits uh, to swimming venues occur every year in the United States that result in about zero to eight infections per year. Somewhere in the ballpark of three is pretty much what we see average. Uh, the extremely low occurrence of PAM makes epidemiologic study very difficult. It's unknown why certain persons become infected with the amoeba, uh, while millions of others do not, and uh, including people they were swimming with who became infected. Right. So the disease is diagnosed using laboratory tests, but these tests are only available at a few laboratories in the United States. Uh, because the infection is so rare and hard to detect at first, diagnosis is sometimes happens only after the patient's death. Uh, PAM is treated with a combination of drugs. You have antibiotics, antifungals, um, things like meltefacin. Um, these drugs are used because they are thought to have activity against Neglaria falari and have been used to treat patients who survived the few survivors. Um, and let me just go ahead and close with this. There was a recent study I just wanted to share from Emerging Infectious Diseases, yeah, called the Misperception and Use of Unsterile Water in Home Devices. And what they found is a lot of Americans are unaware that certain risks go along with using tap water in your home medical devices. So they say, you know, the use of unsterile tap water and the use and that use in home medical devices um, can have a risk of infections from waterborne pathogens, including Neglaria falari. So we're talking about everything from nasal rinsing devices, sinus rinsing devices. Uh, they even talk about the CPAP. So just something to keep in mind. You can check that out at Emerging Infectious Diseases. And uh, good stuff. Anyway, hearts go out to the family of the individual that uh, died from Neglaria. That would be the 38th case in the state of Florida. And um, again, I, I, I uh, encourage you to check out the website, outbreaknewstoday.com. Uh, continue checking out this uh, YouTube channel, Outbreak News TV, for more news and information and interviews concerning infectious diseases and outbreaks. And uh, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. See ya.